PM Express is brought to you by Guarantee Trust Bank. Wouldn't you rather bank with us? Well, hello and welcome to a very, very beautiful week. And I hope your weekend was uh, fantastic. Mine was fantastic, uh, quite hectic, but uh, fantastic. Uh, folks, you see, I don't know what to make of today's uh, topic. Even though it's very, very serious, you know, it's one of those things that you want to laugh about. But if you look at it holistically, it's very serious. So what is that? Well, all the political parties are sort of keeping their cards to their chest. They say, look, I'm not going to let you know what's on my card, because if you see it, we're going to put it on your card and present it as if it was your idea, because in the past, each other's up, everybody's blaming each other. Anytime I come up with this idea, you take it up and run with it. Now, let me tell you a little story about my father, God bless his soul, and his sister, Ekuya Sintimisa, who lives at Zodiac, and I'm sure... Uh, most of you may know Auntie Chris and Timmy are living in the Zodiac. Now they decided to iron a shirt. Well, so my father went out, uh, get the box iron working, and then by the time she comes, her sister was ironing the shirt. So it's like, oh, hold on. I, you know, let's the iron to iron my shirt. She says, no. Men I'm doing her first. I thought about it first. Therefore, whether you, you did it or not, I'm ironing my shirt and it became a, a conflict. But that's how I'm seeing these political parties. Like, I thought about it first. So whether I have the power or not to implement it, you dare not implement it because it was my idea. But look at it as a country. If I have a good idea and I don't have the power to rule, is it not patriotic enough to hand it over to the guy who has power to say, hey, take this and run with it? The house is now divided against itself. Is it time to call for that Unigov that we all love to hate? So that if I have a good idea, we are all one person. Why don't I chip it in so that we all work together? But in this case, if I have a good idea, well, let the country fall. Whenever it's my turn to rule, I will bring my good idea for us to reign. I have two thespians in the field of governance to discuss this issue. You don't want to move away from the scheme. My name is Nana Asakwa, the fourth Akwemwe Dumasa Hining, and also your host. When I come back, we're talking political ideas being stolen. Don't move. Stealing political ideas is the subject matter. It's so funny, but it is very, very serious. It tells you the state we are creating for ourselves. Each one for himself, God for us all. When it is my turn, I will bring my good ideas. If you want my good ideas, you better bring me into power. That's the state with which we are creating, the system with which we are creating. Indeed, one would say, well, why should I give you my ideas for you to run away with so that I never get to uh, bite the cherry on this cake? But then how will the country move forward if all the good guys won't come together but are holding out their cards to their chest? With me in the studio is uh, Dr. Kwesi Jonah, who is a research fellow for IDEC and also a lecturer at the University of Ghana. And then later on the phone, uh, Dr. Eric Odrua saying, uh, Institute of Local Government Studies also will join us to discuss this issue. But I think as funny as it is, it's a big issue. Look, I am so grateful and thank you very much. Welcome. I don't want to personalize it, narrow it down to MPP and DC, yeah. but I want us to look at it generally. generally yeah. I think that's a better approach. Yeah, generally. Uh, so. One guy says, no, I'm not going to bring out my manifesto because if I bring it, you're going to look at chapter 2, chapter 3 and put it in your chapter 16 and then run away with it. So I'm hiding it. But it could be that key solution to our water problems or that magic key for our agricultural problem or educational problems. But he also hasn't got power to rule. So I'm not going to bring it. I mean, 
that is that a system we have created? Uh, Nana, <laughs> it sounds funny, um, but because it is happening, we need to discuss it. Mm -hmm. um, there are quite a few problems about the claim that somebody is stealing another person's or another party's political ideas. Uh, first of all, it is not uncommon for two different people, two different groups to have the same idea. Mm. If there is a problem, the solution you may be thinking about, Nana, another person or other people may be thinking about the same problem. Mm -hmm. So it then becomes very difficult to say that. Uh, because you said it first. As my auntie says, I thought about it first. Because you brought it first, um, the other guys, every other person who uh, discusses that kind of solution might have stolen it from you. It, it, it doesn't, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's problematic. Then, secondly, I think that even if somebody steals an, another person's or another party, and one party steals another party's ideas, what is the problem? Uh, the way in which we implement it, it, we implement a particular, may be different. So, for example, you want one party wants an accelerated industrialization of this country. Another party may have the same idea. One may wish to go the strictly private sector route, industrialization, but only by the private sector. The other one may say, no, 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 no. The state will play a leading role in industrialization. So same idea, different ways <coughs> of implementing them. Mm -hmm. And so the, the point I am making, Nana, is that there isn't, it becomes very problematic to say that um, I won't bring out my manifesto before. <laughs> if, I, <laughs> if I bring it out, the other guy is going to steal it. It's, it's, it's very difficult to sustain this, this kind of idea. The third point I want to raise is that, rather, if I don't want another party, another person to steal my ideas, I would prefer to come out first for the entire country to know yeah. that. I was the first person. Yes, I was the first person <laughs> to come out with my manifesto and this idea is mine. You know, so I wouldn't say that if I come out, then the other, other, other guy will copy it. And so I'm, come, do come out and let the entire world, every single Ghanaian who reads the manifesto know that, yeah, this idea is idea of don't mind your wife political party. Mm -hmm. They associate that idea with, yeah. so that any other person who comes, you know, who, you know. So it becomes so very problematic if one party says, I wouldn't come out with my manifesto because the other, 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 other party will, 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 will steal it. It's, it's so difficult. If every party adopted this kind of attitude, then believe you me, there will be no manifestos. <laughs> there will be no manifestos until the very last minute, a day or two before election, because if you brought your manifesto out, some other person will steal it. So uh, this kind of position is so very difficult to sustain for anybody to, 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 to defend. Uh, but unfortunately, <laughs> this is what you know, we, we, we are hearing. And, and, and I listened to, 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 to uh, this particular uh, statement that we are discussing, mm -hmm. that we won't bring out, we have finished it, but we won't bring it out, because if we bring it out, then the other party will... will, will I, 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 I don't, to be honest, honest with you, this position cannot be sustained. Can we say the house is divided against itself? The, the, uh, we can't say the house is divided against itself because there are two different houses, MPP house and NDC house. So the house is We cannot say the house is divided against itself. Uh, well, but, so the but, house but being the, 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 the point, the other point um, that we need to bear in mind is that, and this is very well researched uh, 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 idea, researchers Political researchers have come to realize one thing, that all parties are gravitating towards the center. Mm -hmm. There may be a few ex exceptions, but political parties tend all to gravitate towards, you know, you have extreme right, extreme mm -hmm. left, and so on and so forth. But for purposes of winning elections, all parties tend to gravitate towards the center. You can get a very extreme case, somebody who comes to power and promises, if I come, I'll kill all the thieves. <laughs> I'll <laughs> kill all the acrobats. If you can't kill, you cannot be a president. That's a very extreme position. Mm -hmm. But generally, all the studies that have been performed 
clearly indicate that political parties are gravitating towards the center. When all of them gravitate towards the center, it means they will tend to have the same ideas. Ideas that are extremely different will be very, very few. So th this is another reason why it is not very good for, 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 for one party to say that I cannot bring out my manifesto for fear that some other party would, 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 would copy it. But in any case, uh, this is what it's come to. This, this uh, gravitating to the center brings me to uh, if we, uh, looking at Ghana. Uh, I, I, I find that for a country which needs uh, almost the same cross board, uh, we, we are too divided. You know, other countries have serious worries such as, look, space technology or sea defense, you know, uh, nuclear or atomic. You know, they have serious challenges and so they can divide and support parties who are going to do more space exploration. But we want boreholes. You know, I need community nurses. I want a doctor. I need my clinic painted in Edumasa. For, for, for such basic needs across, yeah. I mean, need roads, potholes failed, we, we, we are very divided. <laughs> we, I agree with you entirely that the problems of poor developing countries, uh, we are now a middle income country with mm. very, very, very low income features. You know, lower middle income country, but almost all the features we have, apart from per capita income, every single aspect of our economy, everything is low income. And I agree with you entirely that when countries are poor, the needs of the people tend to be very, very basic. Mm. A clinic in the village, a good market where people can sell, a good school where the children can go to, uh, when it rains, it doesn't leak, and so on and so forth. The problems are so very basic. That is another reason why manifestos will look very, very similar. Mm. You know, so, so much so that it, it doesn't become of anybody to claim that the other person <laughs> is, is stealing. Because at the end of the day, the problems of the country are so very basic. The kind of problems that people solved 50 years, 70 years, 150 years ago are still confronting us. Therefore, manifestos will look very, very similar. If I come, 100 senior high school so that every child can get access to secondary education and so on, the manifestos will look very, very similar. And that is why when somebody comes to claim that the other person is copying, you know, uh, it becomes very, very, very difficult to, to, to sustain this kind of argument. I, I, I was listening to a news night on, uh, on Joy Affair. Yeah. They were calling all the political parties, and I think the one that really touched my heart was the Deputy General Secretary of the MPP, who was saying that, I mean, how many people can even read these manifestos? To know the difference? To know the difference between this or that. This and I, you know, I, I hand on my heart, I haven't read many, or even seen many. And I was, so no, I was, the, the, I was the, asking, the, I, you the, know, but, how many but, do they print? But how many copies do they produce? Ah. How very available are the manifestos? S a party publishes manifesto. You have to make very strenuous efforts to get hold of, <laughs> to get hold of the manifesto. You want to analyze and see the differences and the similarities between the manifestos. You have to, you know, call. And, and so it's, it's, the manifestos are not so very easily available. So whether party A copied from party B or not, it will be very difficult for the majority of people to know that. Party A and B are promised <laughs> more or less the same thing because they have, basically they haven't read it. So statements of that kind <laughs> tend to be, you know, uh, 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 very troublesome. I'm going to take a break here, but the, the number is uh, 0560-800-000, 0560-800-000. My next question when I come back from the break is that, even if the manifesto was present and given to everybody on the land, everybody had two copies each. We don't hold people accountable. So even if the guy printed and said, look, I'll paint every house white, and they don't paint it, we don't hold them accountable. So what then would be the use? Coming back. Stealing political ideas, and uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a very hilarious, serious subject. Yes, yes. Very hilarious, serious subject, which... 
I think you and I and everybody should to sit down and look at the uh, political ruling class and see, look, are they having us, you know, are they taking us for a joke or are they taking us for a ride? And uh, just before the break, I was asking, I wanted to ask Doc, uh, Doc, number one, we won't read the manifesto. Number one, two, they're not going to print it. Uh, but assuming everybody had two copies each, one in Chi and English, one in Ga, and English, one in your mother tongue and one in English. We, uh, if I am party, don't mind your wife party. I'm not going to hold them accountable for anything they've written in the book, whether they do it or not. Everybody who will hold them accountable will be, don't mind your husband party, who will come and hold them accountable. But so far as don't mind your wife party is there, then I'm fine. So, why, why, why bother? Why even bother? Yeah. Uh, manifestos serve more than one purpose. In the more developed democracies, it is a way of telling the voting population that these are the ideas that I'm capable of translating into action in the event that I come to power. But the manifesto is, serves another function it, it, it gives the party itself a very coherent program that it can use when it comes to power. So if you are a political party and don't have a manifesto and you come to power, then the question is, what, what are you going to do? Your economic pro and social programs, what are they going to be based on? It is the manifesto that helps you to have a very coherent view of what it is that you have to do for the country for the four or five year period that but it says also another purpose even if the vast majority of the people do not read we have this situation where the party in government tends sometimes to behave differently from what the rest of the party wants their government to do so i am ndc or NPP, and I consider my party to be a social democratic party or right of center party, and we expect the party to implement certain policies. It is the manifesto that helps the people, who the, the NPP or NDC members who are not in government, to determine whether or not, once in power, the president and his ministers and the other appointees do something other than what the party says it was going to do. So the party, the manifesto serves more than one purpose. So even if you gave everybody three copies, one in Hausa, the other one in Chia, the other one in English, and they don't read, you, the party still needs the manifesto for other purposes. One, for, to enable it to prepare a comprehensive plan for the development of the country, and also to enable the party outside of government those party people who are outside of government to monitor their go government, whether the government is doing exactly what it is that they promised they were going to do. So it will still be very important for parties to produce. And that is why I believe one reason why the NPP and the NDC continue producing manifesto, even if they know that 99.9% .9 of the people will never read them. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me acknowledge uh, Dr. Eric Kudrow saying, uh, who's uh, also, I think, the Dean of the Institute of Local Government Studies, University of Ghana. Uh, Doc, you're welcome. Thank you, my brother. Very, very, very grateful. But we are talking about a, a very serious subject which almost sounds like comedy. But as a citizen, I think we need to take it very serious. And that's stealing political ideas. Political parties holding the ideas very close to their chest because if they bring it out, uh, the other party may, may steal it. It could be a slogan, it could be a policy, it could be an idea, and say, no, uh, based on my track record, I'm not bringing anything out again, because any time I come up with something, you steal it, change, tweak it a little bit, and run away with it, so therefore, I won't bring it out. You're looking at like a question of patriotism and everything. But the conversation now developed to, even if we can read these manifestos, uh, number one, they don't even print them. We don't get a copy. One, I mean, who reads? Say, <clears throat> I mean, as a journalist myself, you know, I can't raise my hands. I haven't <laughs> read, I haven't seen or read many manifestos other than here a little political football about it. 
But Prof, before you come in, uh, one of my good friends told me that they went on a campaign trail and uh, his campaign manager is telling the guys that, look, promise them a mosque because they were Muslims. And he says, look, I don't have a budget for a mosque. <laughs> Uh, this is what we are doing, you know, so he tells them what the plans he could do. Just before he was leaving, he, the campaign manager goes and says, Oh, Honorable whispered to my ears that as soon as he comes, he's building you a mosque. So he, they're jubilating. So he asked him, what if I come and I can't build a mosque? He says, look, Honorable, Jesus left 2,000 years ago and promised to come back. He hasn't come. <laughs> Nobody has asked him anything. Promise and let us win these votes. So, <laughs> that was I. Uh, these, these books are just full of promises which they don't fulfill, uh, yet they are even holding these promises to their chest. Where do we go from here? Thank you very much. Um, let me greet your panel members. Yes, uh, I have Dr. Kosi Jonah here. Okay, that's good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> good evening to you, Dr. Jonah, my good friend. Um, you see, manifestos are very important when it comes to uh, democracy. Mm -hmm. It's a way of... Um, helping people to understand the intentions of governments. Unfortunately, in our part of the world, uh, political parties have taken citizens for a ride, if, if I'm permitted to say that, mm -hmm. because they put things on paper and they end up not implementing even 50% of that just till they get elected. But we are going past that stage. Now people are very discerning. Now people are prepared to hold political parties accountable. And now they want to be sure that whatever they put in their party's manifestos, they are able to implement them. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for us, the big political parties in this country are trying to play it against each other to the extent that they have not come out with their party manifestos. And I think we shouldn't blame them because in the entire electoral system, we haven't penciled it on any timetable that by the end of June, all political parties should have come up with their manifestos. It is an important ingredient in the entire electoral space or election space. But we don't have that. In other countries, as part of the elections timetable, the Electoral Commission, together with other independent institutions, in developing the elections timetable of the year, programs it that by the 30th of June, every political party should have developed its manifesto, launched the manifesto, and make copies available to the Electoral Commission. If we had done that, they would have come up with the manifestos. Again, I even have a problem with how the manifestos are developed. Highly, hardly would you hear a party organizing a stakeholders meeting at the regional level or at the district level to solicit or subject any of their intentions to public review before it is finalized. What it then means is that it is not built on the basis of consensus. So a few people meet somewhere in the name of the political party, they call themselves manifesto drafting committee, they come up with a, a certain policies, it is put in a document, and that's it. To what extent is it supported by majority of Ghanaians? That has not also been developed. So I think that we need an entire political framework or a framework within the country that would guide in the manifesto development process so that it will be owned by Ghanaians. Aside from that, these manifestos would have to be converted into other languages. Because if it is in, in, in English language, it is documented, and it is only in Accra, it is only dedicated, and you can have access to it. We all know that majority of Ghanaians are in the rural areas. How do they have access to this? I heard you saying that you have not even seen some of the, all the ones that you've seen are, are not in a printable manner that can help you as a journalist to appreciate the issues. If you don't have the information, how can we hold them accountable? More to the point, if all the political parties aim at developing Ghana, what it then means is that they have good intentions. Why do they keep it to their chest? If you keep it to your chest, then it means you have an ulterior political motive to play to your political advantage rather than playing to the general benefit of Ghanaians. Mm. It is rather unfortunate, and I think we have allowed that to happen as a nation. Mm. Going forward, let them develop a framework that would pencil a deadline by which all political parties should launch their parties' manifestos Copies should be made available to the Electoral Commission. It should be widely publicized so that everybody will know it and then we can hold them accountable. Doc, let me, let me read a message from uh, Takwa Tamso. Uh, and this is from Adom. Uh, he says, Nana, in Ghana, majority of people don't vote based on manifestos. Some vote on tribal basis, others vote on personality. 
So these manifesto issues are neither here nor there. As a country, we need a national development plan and not manifestos. I, I agree that we need a national development plan. But invariably, the content of most of the manifestos finds their way into the national development plan. And that is also one other challenge and gap in our development process. We have not passed our national development agenda into a legislation. Our National Development Planning Commission is just a commission which is within, located within the office of the president, but not an authority. So they find it very difficult to even bite. So I think that, yes, we need a national development plan, but political parties should also develop their manifesto to tell us how they intend personalizing the national development plan. Because you cannot campaign without uh, a manifesto. But your manifesto will tell us what you intend to and how different you will do something or how fast you do something to lead to total development of Ghana. I'm not sure any of the political parties does not wish Ghana well. They will come out and say that they wish Ghana well. But how well do you wish Ghana? If you wish Ghana well, tell us how you intend to achieve the development agenda we all wanted as Ghanaians. If you're not able to do that, then unfortunately you don't, you don't wish us well. What is happening now, in my view, I think they are playing the, 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 their political advantages and selfishness instead of playing to the interest of the whole of Ghana, and that is not happening. They should come out with their political party manifestos within the shortest possible time and give Ghanaians ample time to go into the manifestos to enable them to form an opinion in front of the Doc, hold on for me. Let me come to studio and speak to Dr. Kosi Jonah. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Sanchez raised a very salient uh, thing. You know, you know, politics should not campaign without a manifesto, which is, I mean, you, you can't campaign without a message. But we've seen the rallies and stuff going on, and you know, a few people have asked, you know, what is the message? What are we rallying and supporting you and cheering you for? It's like, you vote for me, your lives will be better. Uh, uh, one is, uh, change is coming, one is change is coming. The two, the two slogans, uh, uh, change is coming and change has come, or you know, something like that. You know, so at, at the moment, you know, you ask yourself, what, 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 what are we campaigning for? What's, I mean, because we haven't had any definite message. Yeah, you need the message, and the message should essentially capture the essence of your manifesto. You know, so a party might not have outdoed its manifesto. But the basic outlines of the manifesto are known to the leadership, and the message should be couched based on what the content of the manifesto, which is said to be adored. Ah, well, vote for change, and change is coming. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Vote yeah, for change, yeah, and change, change is, coming. is coming. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, in the case of vote for change, and change is coming. Um, look, we have a, a completely new set of ideas. Mm. We are sure we are coming to power to implement those. Mm. Those, 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 those ideas, that is what, what, what it implies. But the point I'm making is that you, your, your, your question is based on even when the manifesto is not ready and the party has no message, how does it go about campaigning? What I am saying is that invariably, the leadership of the party know, have a rough idea of what the manifesto is going to look like. And therefore, sometimes they campaign even without the, the even when the manifesto is not ready, based on the message that the uh, manifesto directors have told them? No, no. Uh, I remember in Kufo's time, uh, I don't remember the... Which but, particular election? Uh, but I just remember the second one. was positive change and one was progressive change. Yeah. Yeah, it was between Kufo and Rollins. One yeah. was progressive change and one was positive change. Yeah. Uh, this time, one is vote for change and change, change is coming. Change is coming, yeah. I mean, how, how is the average citizen to sit back and say, ah, no, I prefer vote for change, or no, I prefer change is coming. You know, how, if, if let's say you were a floating voter, how, how do you de decide that, no, 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 change is coming is better than vote for change? I, I don't know, how, how do you, these two messages, say, ah, no, this is the message now, I want. these are slogans designed to rally party members. You know, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not necessarily meant for, you know, designed to rally the party members around the common idea. So when a party says, vote for change, change is coming, essentially, you, know, you are mobilizing your party members that definitely the way the government, 
the present government is conducting the business of this of this country, we are going to change the, the, the it, so the slogans is more or less meant to rally around the members and the supporters of the, of the something very catchy for them to mobilize around. Mm -hmm. You know. So um you 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 think that uh, if you are not a member of the party, if you're not a supporter of the party, then vote for change change is coming is supposed to give you a rough idea of what a party stands for. No. Okay. That is not that is not that is not a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> it's a so, slogan designed to rally people around the common common uh, especially the supporters and the members of the party around the common idea. So so basically as a floating voter the, the message hasn't come yet. As a floating voter, it is only when they begin to uh, talk about the content of their manifesto, they, 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 because they know that we are not a reading, a reading, a reading people, mm -hmm. they come to the political platform and take just one, two, three ideas from every rally. Everywhere they go to campaign, they take just a few ideas from the manifesto as a, as a basis for campaign. So they go to one place, it's free senior high school, <laughs> they go to another place, uh, free uh, nursing training. Uh, uh, you know, you know, so Beach is always, is always so, in there somewhere. Okay, so they take, because we know that people will not read, they take a few ideas from the manifesto, very catchy, uh, most likely to convince people, you know, everywhere they go to campaign and also on the campaign platform uh, when they go to rallies. Dr. Sai? Yes, my brother. Yeah, you, you, you raised this topic, which uh, this question asked him. You know, uh, there should be a manifesto, a clear message, so that you go out there campaigning with it. Uh, but then I was actually looking at we, the, 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 the followers. You know, as of now, yes, we can see our followers still calling radio stations, insulting each other, you know, following the uh, you know, political party leaders. Around. And I'm just trying to, are they just following for following sake or there's a clear message to say, listen, this guy's agreed policy is number one and therefore I'm going for it or this guy's educational policy is tip-top, and therefore I'm going for it? I, I think most of the followers, there is, um, uh, we have a group, we call the primary followers. Whether you have manifestos or not, they would vote for that particular political party. Mm -hmm. The essence of manifesto is to attract other, other members who, may, who are not necessarily members of the party, mm -hmm. but they believe in your ideas and what you can do for them. The way our politics has become, if somebody is a die-hard CPP, the person would vote for CPP, even if CPP does not have a manifesto. In fact, majority of Ghanaians does not even see the manifesto before going to vote, because mm -hmm. they believe in what the party itself stands for. Mm -hmm. But the essence of manifesto is to get others on board. So, so there's people you hear talking on radio, defending their parties, and then arguing among themselves is because they believe in the foundation of the party, not so about the party's manifesto. You know, but the manifesto becomes a plus, and it helps all others to judge the political party, especially when that party wins the elections. As soon as you win the election, people go back to look at your party's manifesto, and then start comparing it with the practical pro uh, programs you implement after winning the election. And I can tell you that now the Ghanaian public, they, they are very discerning, and they will be marking every political party according to the manifesto promise to the public. And I, I'm sure that is why most of the political parties are very, very careful and cautious in releasing their manifestos. Because when it comes, people are going to mark them, and they hold them accountable. So I, I believe that is what is going to happen now. But it's rather unfortunate, and I think those things should never happen to us again. They should remove it. I can liken it to two lawyers um, going to court for a case. When you finish with your case, before you close your case, the judge would ask you to file your written addresses. And the judge will give you a deadline, a date. Mm -hmm. Normally, you get one lawyer saying that, well, I'll file mine first. But before you realize, you hold on until the other person files. But because the judge has given them the same date, they will have to file it. They have no option. Why can't we do the same for Ghana? to give political parties a deadline within which they will publish and then launch their political party manifesto and then launch copies with the electoral commission, put it on their website so that anybody at all can have access to it. Hmm. You, you see that happening? No. The reason why uh, it would be a very good idea if 
the EC could give parties a deadline for uh, submission of their manifesto to the EC and so on and so forth. <coughs> what has undermined the effectiveness of manifestos in our politics is also the ethno-regional basis for the mobilization of party followers and supporters. Some parties have come to realize that whether they produce a manifesto or not, whether the manifesto comes out early or not, they are assured of minimum 80% of the votes of a particular region of a particular ethnic group. Yeah. It, it, no, no, the ethno-regional basis of mobilization of party supporters and followers is, is doing great harm mm -hmm. to the role that the manifesto should play in our politics. You know, what Dr. Osai was talking about. You know, it, without this ethno-regional basis of mobilization, parties would be very eager to come out with their manifestos on time to convince people. But as he said, people will vote then you, and you are assured of particular region, you are assured of it, what, whether you campaign or don't, don't campaign, whether you produce a manifesto or you don't, whether you disseminate your manifesto or you don't disseminate. So the ethno-regional basis for the mobilization of party members and supporters is doing very, very, very great harm to the effective role that manifestos could play in our politics. And uh, we should not take rule that one out. Can, can, can we ever break from that cycle or we are stuck in it? It is something that is going to be with us for a very long time. But I believe that as the country it develops and as parties also change their behavior, if a party comes to power and the people of a particular region or ethnic group see that the way in which the positions were distributed, the ministerial positions were distributed, every ethnic group, every major ethnic group, every major region in this country got a fair share. Development. As people can increasingly come to realize that the na national development is distributed evenly regardless of whether or not the party got 90% of the votes in a particular region or not, that there's fairness. Eventually, I believe that people will change their mind. But for now, for now, I think this phenomenon is going to stay with us for a very, very long time. Now, let, let me catch up with some of the messages. Says, Nana, I don't think Dr. Jonah is in Ghana. He would not have bothered himself about the manifestos. The things politicians talk about in local language, which everybody hears them, they don't do it. Who cares about manifestos? It's all political talk. In fact, we've had much about manifestos from uh, 1992 to date. All have failed us. Uh, they talk about manifestos and they have failed to fulfill them. They don't care. In fact, they keep on repeating them on a year and every election year. This is Eric from Manu. And that's one thing which happens that the manifestos seem to be a, a copy and paste. If you look from one year to the other, a few punctuations here and there, change the cover of the book, reproduce it. No, no, no. But, the, well, I, this, I, I, I respect this gentleman's views, but mm -hmm. I, I, I think he got me wrong. Mm -hmm. What have I been saying? I am saying that the reason why the manifestos do not work in this country mm -hmm. is X, Y, Z. Is <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so he's more or less saying, saying the same thing, saying, saying, saying thing that I'm saying. But the, about the repeating the, the manifestos from one election year to the other, uh, that should not surprise anybody because the problems of the country do not change much. Mm. Your manifesto is designed to address the specific problems facing the country at a time. If during this election 2008, people had no drinking good drinking water, 2012, they still didn't have good drinking water, are you going to stop talking about what, how to solve the water problem? Mm -hmm. If it, so, the, the, it is, they, they, they keep, uh, with manner manner changes, they keep addressing the same problems, more or less the same solutions from one election to the other, precisely because the problems are so very basic and they stay constant over time. People don't have good schools. Are you going to stop talking about because the other election I spoke about it so this time around, I'm not going to talk about building classrooms for you. you, you. So that is not too much of a problem. People, you, I definitely expect that from election, one election to the other, the manifestos will look similar. Differences will be minor, minor, being new solutions that a party maybe has. 
thought about for that particular election. But the, so long as the problems are the same, the manifesto yeah, themselves will the not change much. Dr. Sai, yes, is, is, it, is it time for, for Unigov? <laughs> not at all. We are divided amongst ourselves. We don't even want to bring our best card out to help the country. If we were all together and had a beautiful structure like the Akomuhini structure, we would all chip in to help because... Yes, it's, it's good. It is time for unity. But if you ask me, I would, I would go for a two-party state rather than Unigov. A two-party state, I would advocate for African type of democracy, which requires that we have only two parties. No presidential elections are conducted. We don't spend money on elections. We should have each of the political parties going for their own Congress, incur their own expenses, give us a president who becomes the president of the state. Then that person rules for 10 years implement a long-term plan for the country. Once the 10-year ends, you have the person coming from the other party automatically, assuming the rent of government for 10 years. The money we're going to use for elections, we put it in a, into an election fund and use it to build hospitals across the country. If you ask me, that's what I would say, that we need <laughs> African type of democracy in Ghana. What we are practicing now is something that we have imported into this country. Our circumstances does not support it. The illiteracy rate is very high. People do not read manifestos. Yes, so they vote and all kinds of things. You have the literate group leading people on, literate group confusing people, literate group trying to lure people to vote. So virtually, we are practicing democracy, but it's a few people who are really carrying the democratic that's problematic. Uh, Dr. Osai, <laughs> I, 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 I also really want to call Kosi Chum to see if you give me another hour for what you, this kind of worms you have opened. <laughs> no, no, no. no. I, I, Dr. Jonah is going to rebut. And, no, no, no. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't go to rebut, but I mean, essentially what he's saying is let us have two parties. Mm -hmm. Each party will produce a president for us yeah. for two, four year or two, five year terms. Mm -hmm. Then the other party we put another to take over from there. Mm -hmm. So there's no need spending money on any elections. To do that essentially mm -hmm. is to deny the majority of your own people the opportunity to participate in the election. But the people don't understand <laughs> what is going <laughs> on. So what are you denying them? <laughs> to, to elect, you know, so, so essentially what he's saying is that leave the people out. They don't, they don't understand anything. So don't let them vote. But I, I, I cannot no, agree. No, no, be, them before them. I go to Dr. Sain, uh, uh, I'm sitting here saying living, that... Leaving uh, out the people, uh, I mean, will take the essential quality of democracy completely out of politics. Dr. Sain, I mean, uh, leaving out the people <laughs> becomes a problem. But <laughs> my, let, let me support you here. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here, I can read and write, and I haven't read a manifesto, let alone those, those who can't read and write. So who, who, who are we going to be leaving out? <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you see, yes, we leave the majority out, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. But we, you, you and I sit here, and we elect people to represent us in parliament. They vote on bills. They take decisions without getting back to us. Mm -hmm. We are not just ask ourselves that decisions parliamentarians take in parliament. They take it on our behalf. Is that what we would have? Is that what we have asked them to do? If a bill is introduced in parliament, that do we have enough time for parliamentarians to come back to us in the constituency and consult us? That I represent you. We are going to vote on such and such bill. This is a copy of the bill. What do you think I should say? How should you want it to go? They don't. They don't consult us. They represent us in, in, in their own way. You know, so if we really want to carry the majority along, then we should ensure that we provide information to the majority. We also make sure that we build their capacity by raising the literacy rate so that they can understand the art of governance. Because if the literacy rate is very high, then what that means is that the few who are discerning and who can read and write would always confuse the majority. And that, for me, is dangerous. The caliber of the majority is very important. The capacity of the majority to be involved in the decision-making process is very important so that they would understand what they are voting for. Does, 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 what is the big fear? What is the big, big fear? Yeah, I mean, you, the truth you, is you, that you cannot, the majority of the people don't understand the, the governance we have adopted. No, no, the reason, it's been 20 years the now. The reason the majority of the people don't understand is that parties too often forget that they also have a responsibility. You have a message to give to the people. You should give it 
in a very simple form, in the language they understand, in a very simple form. If you put 450 page manifesto before, <laughs> you should hear the two of us. <laughs> How many 450 page manifestos can you read for one election before you take a decision which party to vote for? But present the message in a very simple form, in the language the vast majority of the people understand. Then, at least you'll be helping the people to appreciate the fine points that you want to raise. The manifestos are not available in local languages. The 450 page thick manifesto, it's one third of the Old and New Testament combined. How many, how many such manifestos can I read, Anna, before I take a decision? Hmm. What one of five presidential candidates I should vote. It's, 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 it's not. So we are also failing. As political parties, we are failing. Question, basic question that we have to ask ourselves. Are we presenting our manifestos? It, you can have a 450 page manifesto, but do you have simplified versions in the languages that people do understand, in simple messages of radio? But the truth is, uh, as a political party, I depend on the ignorance to, to win votes. I don't want to come to you. You're not going to take a bag of rice and vote for me. You, you need to, if, if you have to buy you a jumbo jet, I don't, I don't, you're, not, you're not the sort of person I want to campaign to. I want to go somewhere, they take a bottle of water or a bottle of oil and vote for me. So the, the, the political parties depend on the ignorance masses for the votes that they want. So you are too sophisticated. So, so no, what is democracy? Democracy is about the demos, the people, the people. Yeah. So if you are a political party and you want the people to remain ignorant so that you can feed on their ignorance to come to power, you are not a democratic political party. Let me give the last word to Dr. Sain. Uh, thank you, my brother. But I think what Dr. Jonas said is exactly what, what may be happening to our country now. It's in your to the benefit of the politician if the average or majority of Ukrainians are ignorant so that they can play on their ignorance to their advantage. But I think we have to blame ourselves too as a society. Mm. There is no compulsion, there is no law that compels political parties to reduce, to one, develop their manifesto and make it available at any point in time. Two, to reduce it to an abridged version or a local language or a language that will be understood by a majority of their members. Mm. So they don't have any, they, they don't attach any importance or agency to it. Assuming we have a framework and there is a regulation or a law backing it, which compels all political parties to do that. They will be under some compulsion to develop their manifestos, make them available at a certain date, and then go further to reduce it into a language or an abridged version that people would understand. Then they would not play on the ignorance or the intelligence of the majority of Ghanaians. But I think our young democracy is growing. These are the things we can do going forward to improve the process so that we don't leave the majority of Ghanaians outside the democracy. Dr. Sain, thank you so much for that input. I will take a quick uh, break here, and then when I come back, the conversation continues. Stealing political ideas, are we shooting ourselves in the foot? Do we all come together and follow Dr. Sain's, you know, reduce the stakes? Because I don't when the stakes are just way too high. And the winner is taking everything, but if we're to reduce the stakes, we're going to get a better country which develops faster. Don't move. Well, thank you very much for sending all your messages. I'm going to try and catch up with as many as I can. This is Akuto. Hey, Akuto Razak. Hey, Akuto. Come on, Akuto. <laughs> Akuto Razak from Tamale says, Ghanaians, we vote based on the good idea on our preferred, uh, our preferred candidates have. Okay, this one says, we have given too much priority to party manifestos which are not even achievable leaving the constitution let's all come together to have a plan for the nation not subjected to party manufacturers let's construct our constitution to show us the direction to flow you see from ho hoi how many Ghanaians vote based on manifestos after winning the elections they change their manifestos to chop chop this with their manifesto again <laughs> Uh, this with the uh, manifesto again, time will tell. Uncle Gideon in uh, Soboba. Hmm, change the manifestos to chop chop. <laughs> chop, chop. <laughs> and let me go to the next one. This one says, 
the Joy PM Express guy. Oh, really? What is the name? That's why insulting me. Why? Actually, let me read it out. The Joy PM Express guy is talking very stupid this evening. Why is plagi why is plagiarism illegal? Because manifestos are copywritten and registered by the writer. He must invite those with knowledge on the topic and don't talk like rented press. But you didn't even add your name, you see, because you are almost as an and you're not even bold enough. Your number is uh, 02 uh, 020 361 Your number is 020 361 My order, who did my tell me, you are saying, yeah, that's your number. You didn't add your name. I've left your number out there. I'm sure people will call you and tell you off. Uh, the issue about uh, philosophy, the issue about philosophy, to be frank, don't look at the manifestos, but they are gained. They will make, they will make when their parties is electors and to power. Let me read it again. So the issue about philosophy, to be frank, don't look at the manifestos, but the gains they will make when their party is elected into power. Also about the public being designing, which they have been since time in memorial, a bit still carried on some old chop maker, chop some ideology from Senor in Kolebu. Good evening to you, Senor. It seems there's a conspiracy theory of politicians to keep the masses in the dark. I don't know if it's a plan or it just you know, seems to find how the system is. In the race between CPP and UGCC, their slogans, self-governance now and within the shortest possible time, respectively captured their central ideas. How do you analyze the current slogan in relation to the nation's current condition and how it may affect the 2016 election results you also didn't hide your name but thank you for sending a message uh please nana ndc slogan is changing lives and transforming ghana not vote for change uh we believe change is already happening in people's lives okay this is eric in Bali. eric thank you for that Good evening. I believe uh, uh, Party A or Party B cannot steal uh, a party's manifesto because the parties plan before putting it out. So if you steal some of the manifesto, what plan is the party going to do with what they stole? Uh, from, oh, you're calling me. Don't call this number. I can, don't call this number because that, that's the WhatsApp nine. so don't call it. I can take it. Uh, the, what plan is the party going to do with what they stole? Uh, I'm from the north, so we are not voting according to manifesto. Uh, from Musa Jamoni in Gushego. Let me go to another one. You sent so many messages, and it is only polite that I catch up. Uh, this one says they are politicians. They are not statesmen. A politician is a statesman who uses state resources for his own benefit. But a statesman is a politician who uses his own resources for the benefit of the nation. Uh, this is Saint Afwakwa Af Af in Achim Tafo. Uh, that's a good one. Let me read it again. It says, uh, a politician is a statesman who uses state resources for his benefit. But a statesman is a politician who uses his resources for the benefit of the nation. I don't know. What's our second one? I know one day. Uh, but one day, uh, majority of our, of our politicians will become statesmen. <laughs> now, now, on the issue of manifestos, take a critical look at the manifesto of the ruling party on the education sector and see if what we see now is a true reflection of the so called manifesto. My granny in the village does not know anything about manifesto, and this is Zach. Get one more from here. Good, Nana, good evening. My point is that after reading the manifesto, they don't even know where they put these documents. So they, they forget what they said and, and do other things. From Fat uh, Joe in Bekwai Asante. So generally, these are people's, 
uh, not a lot of confidence in, in the manifestos. In the manifestos. Uh, yes. No, the point I'm making, Nana, is that there are very many reasons why people don't have any confidence in manifestos. One, the parties are not making the effort to reach the people to disseminate their manifestos in very simple terms, in the language the people do understand, and in any other way that is easy for the people to grasp. I, I think if I had a manifesto, selecting portions of the manifesto and putting them across in fair local languages in, in, over the radio, the, the people don't have to sit down and read 450 pages. You know, very. We are not making the effort to deliver the messages in our manifestos in the, in the way the people can relate to. Simple messages in the lo local languages and so on and so forth. How do you expect a 65-year-old man who didn't go to school and speaks maybe only a hunter or enzima to be able to come and read the manifesto? But the local FM station, you can deliver the manifesto in languages that he or she can understand and then you'll be making a so lot of... Probably an abridged yeah, version. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. We, are not, we are not making that effort. 450 is a bit much <laughs> for everybody, including yeah. even the, uh, yeah. the the party head himself. I'm sure he doesn't read it. Somebody <laughs> reads it. The leader, and the leader and brief, of the party. Brief, what, what, what's been said <laughs> on what chapter. Yeah. But Dr. Jonah, thank you so, so, so much. Uh, many of you have sent messages saying that I'm look, my shirt looks nice. Well, uh, if you want uh, one of my shirts, you can call 0243. Double six two zero zero one zero two four three six six two zero zero one. Uh, call Tantis wherever you are in the country, they can deliver the shirt to you. There are many, many other designs, and indeed, they've been clothing me all throughout. So, I want to say thank you to them. I want to say thank you to you too for sending me messages. And the guy who said I was uh, stupid, thank you too for even sending your message. I said your number is zero two zero three six one two four three four. That was in a nice message, but thanks for watching anyway. Doc, thank you very much. Tomorrow we'll be back to do this all over again. But let's read the manifestos and hold them accountable.